When Eddie Kamai plays in clubs, as he still does at age 83, he carries on an oral tradition that is thousands of years old. With every song he performs, the thoughts and ideas of old Hawaii revive and live again. Long ago, he realized that this music was not just entertainment, that it came from a deeper source. Kavana would say, Eddie, you would come. Come and bring your wife, Myrna, and let's go to Kau, my hometown, where I was born and raised. Every Hawaiian bloodline is rooted in the natural landscape. Families are intimately connected to nature and to the ancestral spirits, the Aumakua, that guide them through the generations. Chants and songs layered in kauna, double meanings, weave together genealogy, legend, and the sense of place. Before Western contact, Hawaii traditions were transmitted orally. To record these before they vanished, Mary Kavana Pukui, already a legendary historian and translator at Bishop Museum, began making research trips throughout the islands with her assistant, Ellie Williamson. Eddie would join them on the Big Island in 1970. Calvin sat in the front of the jeep as we drove down. Started going down to Kau, to Waikapuna, is where she was raised by her grandmother. Oh, it was a bumpy ride all the way. And all of a sudden, Calvin would say, stop. So I would stop the jeep, and she'd turn to the side, and she would look at the area. I, it's just a small little hill, and she started chanting. And I said, I, wish, I told myself, I wish I had a tape recorder or a camera. And she turned to me and she says, there is one of my childhood friends who lived there. She did that three times as we were going down. And we came to an area called, a place called Pohiula. And she said, this is where I would come by and sleep. When, we came, when I came down with my, my donkey, my pet donkey, Manny, and when we sleep down there in the cave, you know, they had brackish water there, so we were fine. Because we brought fruits and, you know, produce from up above to the people down in the village as a little girl. She said, I enjoy those moments. And so she worked with Myrna about an idea we should do a song about our day, riding on a jeep, going down, visiting Kau. It was something really special for me. Been asked by my teacher and visiting, you know, her hometown where she grew up as a little girl. When I worked with Carvena to complete the, the idea and thought about the lyrics of the song. And I had, all I have to do is look at it and, and do the music. And the title of the song was Keala A Kajib. The Road of the Jeep. When Kavana chanted to a particular hill or home site, she was remembering precious moments in her childhood. Eddie saw how he too could evoke the Hawaiian tradition of honoring beloved places and persons. Putting their kau journey into the song Keala Akajip ensured that the places they visited and the events of that day would live on. That remarkable trip with Kavena Pukui was a highlight of a collaboration that continued for nearly a quarter century. The road of the jeep opened the path of a lifetime for Eddie and marked a new direction in his music. You know, with Mary Kavena Pukui, she was my teacher. The first time I met her, she said, you come. And so we were having dinner, and I, I, I wanted to ask her something. So I started talking, and I said, Kavena, I got into Hawaiian music, but I'm not singing. But I just play music. I want to know something about the Hawaiian music. I said, I want to know, and I want to learn. And she didn't say a word. We just eat. I said, well, 
That's it. And so after we got through dinner, we were walking out. And she was standing by the doorway. And when I came to her, next to her, she, spoke, she told me, you come. You come and see me. So I, I went to visit her. So I asked her, how should I go about doing things? And since she worked at the Bishop Museum, you know, for many years, over 25 years, she said, you go and look for the music. And she always encouraged me, to go out there and you ask. Go, you go. Whenever I visited Kavena Pukui, we could talk about the subject, what I'm doing, and my findings. But when I'm leaving, she always reminds me, Oh, Mao, Eddie. Oh, Mao. You know, in other words, continue on. Do the work. Do the work. Her concern is the children. Do it for the children. They would live forever. So whenever I leave her, I go out there and do what I can.